In this lecture, we'll continue our discussion on the concept of strain. In my previous lecture, I have discussed how the motion within a deformable continuum body can be described using both material and spatial description. The other name of these two descriptions are the Lagrangian and the Eulerian description. After that, we have defined what is the deformation gradient tensor followed by the displacement gradient tensor and then the green strain tensor and the infinitesimal strain tensors are defined. So in this lecture, I'll discuss on the limitation of this infinitesimal small strain tensor. We, to discuss this, we need the mathematical expression of this small strain definition as well as the mathematical description of the green strain tensor. And we know that both can be described using the deformation gradient tensor. For example, the small strain which is defined with respect to the displacement gradient tensor in this way. And using the relation between the deformation gradient tensor and the displacement gradient tensor, we can see then the small strain is also defined using the deformation gradient tensor F as this. So half times F plus F transpose minus the identity matrix. And we know the green strain tensor as uh, the mathematical rel relation with the deformation gradient tensor as uh, this. We can go to this equation. Yeah. So half times F transpose F minus identity. So now we'll see for a particular type of deformation how these two strains are defined. And before going to this particular example, I'll discuss for different motion how this deformation gradient can be explained. And we'll take uh, mostly the 2D cases. And that I want to show you from one internet source, which is readily available. You can type here continuum mechanics. And then we'll see, we'll get one link. So one is, this is from the Wikipedia and the next one is from continuummechanics.org. So please click, click this link and then we'll get, uh, we can go through all this, but here I'll just uh, bring this deformation gradient subtopic under the topic of deformation and strain. So if we click, we'll see some examples shown in this particular web page. So first uh, the deformation gradient is defined. You can see this equation. This is already discussed in my previous lecture. And then uh, there is a relation between the deformation gradient tensor and the displacement gradient tensor, which is just identity tensor plus the displacement gradient tensor. And now we get some examples in two-dimensional uh, coordinate system. So here, uh, the horizontal axis is denoted by x, which is my x1. Uh, and then the vertical is defined by y, which I used to write x2. So x1, x2 is x, y in this uh, discussion here. And then uh, you see there is a, key, key, a square, uh, which is the undeformed shape of a particular material. And then this deformation is corresponding to a rigid body displacement, which is just moving to some new location which is defined with the blue uh, square. And the mathematical relation of this rigid body displacement uh, is this. Small x is capital X plus 5. 
So in the horizontal direction, it, it moves uh, five unit. And then y is, the small y is capital Y plus two. So in the vertical direction, all the points move by two, two unit, okay? So now you can see for this kind of deformation of this material body, if we try to get uh, the deformation gradient tensor, this is nothing but the identity tensor. So first, uh, this deformation gradient tensor is, will be a two by two matrix. The first element is d, d del small x by del capital X, and then second one will be del small y by sorry this uh, the second will be del small x by del y so this this uh, first uh, uh, four terms here okay so del x del y is zero the second element the two two uh, one uh, place will be zero and then the one two uh, also will be zero and then two two will be one so now we see what will be the rigid body rotations so this i told about the rigid body displacement now for rigid body rotations you can see uh, the schematic is this the undeformed shape, shape is shown using dotted line and the deformed shape using the uh, full line here with blue color and this deformation is denoted by this mathematical equation the material coordinate and the spatial coordinate is defined using this relation this is nothing but a uh, orthogonal tensor you can see that and then if I try to find what is f the f is cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta so this is also a orthogonal uh, tensor all right so this is the rigid body rotation so here f is not an identity tensor but it is actually orthogonal tensor, okay? Uh, then simple deformation, like if we see stretching, so the stretching case is uh, schematically shown here. So the square element is now become a rectangular element moved um, in both horizontal and vertical direction, whereas the origin remain at uh, zero, zero, both for undeformed and deformed configuration. So this uh, deformation can be expressed using this mathematical equation. And for this case, we get the deformation gradient tensor as, uh, as a diagonal matrix. But here, the diagonal elements are not unit. So it is not an identity matrix. It is some diagonal matrix with non, uh, like the, the, the diagonal elements are not one. Then sear, sear with rotation. The schematic is shown here in the right side. You can see uh, one side it is remaining as it is, but uh, the other side actually is moving upward. This is uh, the sear of a metal body, which is uh, mathematically the, the this deformation can be expressed using this. Here you can see the diagonal terms are one, but the off diagonal terms uh, will be non-zero, and here it is 0 0.5. And then pure shear is denoted by this mathematical equation, where uh, the uh, uh, material uh, coordinate and the spatial coordinates are related using this and here you can see this is a symmetric matrix with diagonal terms one 
Diagonal term once means there is no stretching. And off diagonal term, if it is symmetric, then it is a pure shear. And if it is not symmetric, then it is simple shear or shear with rotation. So for uh, for the shear case without stretching, we'll have diagonal terms one. So when diagonal terms not one, then there will be some stretching involved. So with combination of stretching and shear, we can see uh, the general deformation can be expressed using this equation where there is both uh, shearing and stretching involved. And in this case, the deformation gradient will be expressed using a very general matrix equation where the diagonal terms are also not one and uh, the off diagonal terms are also uh, such that this is not a symmetric matrix, okay? So with this, uh, let me again go back to the class note and see what we uh, have in this uh, discussion of limitation of small strain. So now let us take this uh, example of mm, uh, rotation and uh, we, we can see that uh, the rotation uh, actually can pollute the strain calculation if we consider infinitesimal strain strain cell definition. So let us take the 2D rigid body rotation as explained earlier. So the deformation gradient tensor here is defined using this cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta. And then if we try to calculate small strain, then which is defined using this relation, then the final form of that small strain will be this. So in the diagonal term, it is cos theta minus one. Now, if we see that if the deformation is small or the rotation is small, then uh, the diagonal terms will be close to zero, but uh, it will become higher if we have a large rotation. So the result here in this is a negative normal strain. So you can see cos theta can have maximum one. So for uh, theta not is equal to zero, it will have some negative strain where there is uh, the object has not deformed at all. So we are dealing with rigid body rotation only. So there is no straining for the deformation of the material. But if we consider this small strain definition, then that gives some non-zero strains. So, but ideally it should be zero. And this uh, error grows, uh, grows as uh, the rotation angle increases. So this is clearly undesirable. And uh, this demonstrates the problem we can encounter if we consider small strain. So here the problem is rotations, not the strain themselves. So this material body is not straining, but it is rotating and for that we are getting some non-zero strains. So and this error will be less when the rotation is small and it will become higher if there is large rotation. Whereas uh, if we take green strain tensor for this case, you see that uh, it is defined as half F transpose M minus identity and this F which is a orthogonal tensor, F transpose F will become identity always. So that means this is zero. So green strain tensor for any orthogonal transformation or any uh, rigid body uh, rotation or displacements, it is always zero, but small strain or infinitesimal strain definition for rigid body displacement, it is zero always, but for rigid body rotations, if the rotation angle is large, the small strain will give non-zero uh, strain values even though the material is not deforming.
so this is clearly a problem but this problem is not uh, become a large uh, uh, lead to large error if we encounter small deformation or small rotation so for small rotation uh, related problem we can use the small uh, strain definition but uh, it will lead to a error, large error if we uh, apply this infinitesimal strain case to uh, deformation where there is substantial rotation involved okay all right so with this now let us go to the next topic so next topic here uh, you can see if i consider the uh, related uh, topics which we have discussed uh, uh, in the strain uh, stress tensor like uh, the transformation principal strains uh, and the spherical uh, and deviatoric strains so because strain also is a second order tensor uh, as it, it is uh, as uh, uh, we have seen for the case of uh, stress tensor so this every the concept remains same so the same concept we can apply uh, for this uh, strain tensor also and just uh, we can get similar uh, uh, expressions and all and so that's why we are not uh, discussing again these topics so we can very well uh, apply the concept of stress tensors uh, in this case also but here remember the strain tensor should be um, expressed as a tensor okay so here uh, you cannot use engineering strain definition and apply the concept of uh, strain transformation and all so you have to convert it to a tensor form and then you can apply uh, this eigenvalue problem and uh, transformation of strain set etc okay the last topic here is uh, the comp strain compatibility and this is very interesting let me just explain briefly here what is it so we if we refer that strain displacement relation uh, for small strain can be expressed in this form so here this index notation represents actually six equations for six strains six strain components so uh, we are dealing with a symmetric strain tensor so that's why we have six independent stress components and this six independent stress strain components is expressed in terms of three displacement u1 u2 u3 or uvw okay so now if we specify or in, 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 like during a uh, solution of some problem if you assume this the displacement field uvw then through differentiation we can get the strain field and if uvw will be single valued displacement then this strain field also will be equally uh, well behaved however the converse is not true so if we start a solution by as assuming this strain or the stress field because we know that strain and stress will be related by some constitutive relation so if we uh, assume the strain field then stress field also can be obtained by the material constraints or the vice versa so let us start with some uh, assumption of the strain components and then to get the displacement we have to integrate this strain displacement equation and that procedure may not give you a an unique solution and may not uh, give you a single value displacement field so and this is not totally surprising because we are trying to get are trying to solve six equations for only three unknowns so we have six strain equations and from there we are trying to get three unknowns displacements 
so you may not get a solution for the displacement of this uh, from the six equations which are unique so to overcome this problem what we do uh, we see that to get a single valued strain uh, displacement field from the strain field the strain must satisfy some additional relations and these relations are called integrable integrability or compatibility equation so they must have some uh, relation within themselves so that that means the strains should be compatible to each other okay so so that means if i assume a strain field for solving some problem then this strain field i cannot assume very arbitrarily this strain field should have some relation within them and these relations are the compatibility equations okay so to get this compatibility compatibility equation what we do we actually get the strain displacement relation and then we eliminate the displacement from the strain displacement relation so if we do this uh, actually there are there can be six equations like this so this uh, are the six equation written here but this six equation actually are not uh, independent equations uh, actually if we do uh, such ma some mathematics we can show that uh, uh, from there we can get three uh, actually independent three independent equations so this six actually represents three independent equations okay so these are uh, these equations are relate, uh, shown as uh, uh, relation with strains but uh, we can also get uh, six stress compatibility equation so if we assume stress field then this stress uh, also should be uh, should have some relation within themselves because stress and strain you can see they are related by some material constants only so uh, whether uh, it is strain or stress both uh, should have uh, uh, some compatibility within themselves okay all right so now there are some exercise problem uh, for this strain uh, chapter uh, so you you should uh, try to solve them one by one for to get more confidence uh, in this topic with this uh, let me end this lecture here